And now we are recording the meeting uh, an hour and 20 minutes after it started. Grant, I hope you've been taking good notes. Uh, it's been a, it's been a okay notes. Agenda. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, with my tremendous, you know, here's how this goes. Grant and I were chatting about this before everyone else came on is, you know, the, the advice, and it's very good advice that you get that you, if you're running the meeting yourself, which is where these problems come about, is, you know, get in 15 minutes before it starts, which I always do, and then I just sit here. <laughs> Um, and of course, I pause the recording because you don't want a recording 15 minutes of me staring into space or if I stop my video, 15 minutes of black screen. And so when everybody arrives at seven or shortly after, then I have to remember to resume the recording. Um, and what happened tonight was we we haven't, you know, um, Michelle was having some technical problems, Grant was in the gallery trying to get in, Jim was trying to get in. It was a little bit of a, you know, just typical kind of getting it all together but I completely forgot to to you know what I mean because I'm sitting here by myself for 15 minutes I completely forgot to unpause the recording because of all the other stuff that was going on and just realized it <laughs> so anyway mea maxima culpa as they'd say mm -hmm. and my apologies to the, to the gods of YouTube <laughs> we can Part of our timeout at the beginning of the meeting, Kevin. Say that again, Michelle. We can all make this part of our timeout at the beginning of the meeting. Mm. Yeah, I, and can I can I just assign all of you to in future turn to me and go, "Hey, goofball, did you turn <laughs> on the recording?" <laughs> because I just, you know, I think this happened once before, and it it has to do with everybody coming in, and you know, I, I'm feeling this certain kind of pressure because I'm running the thing and just forgetting to turn it on. Anyway, my apologies. Well, I'll just say I'll try my best. I'll try my best. Um, one thing I, I will note, and I I don't know how much extra effort this is, but I do think that Hassan or Jay can edit out spare time uh, in the video. Uh, so um, I'm not sure if that, I, I don't know where I've heard that, but I have heard, I think that you know, if you started it, you know, tape rolling half hour early and nothing happens or something, then they can go and just, you know, chop it to when the meeting starts. But I'm not sure. Yeah, that's good to know. I mean, you know, because what happens is, you know, um, as I was saying to Grant before we started tonight, sometimes you try to start the meeting and there are issues. Like I've had this a couple of times where it's demanding a password that I don't have and I have to call Jay at home and all this stuff. And, and so it's a little bit, it's a little yeah. hairy. So I always get in and I kind of, like I said, I start the meeting really early and then I just sit here and wait and I always pause the recording so it doesn't record, you know, 20 minutes of blank screen kind of thing. So thank you, Grant. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll bear that in mind. And um, I w ultimately what I like to do is turn over the running of it to somebody else, you know, <laughs> so that, like, because it's just, you know, it feels like a lot sometimes. Anyway, sorry, Annie, I totally derailed you. Um, oh, that, you that's okay, me. but no worries. That that, that was important. Um, I made so, you co-host if you want to share your screen. Sure, yes, I'm going to do that now. I don't know if I've done this. Um, all right, can you, can you guys see yeah. that? Yeah. So this is, um, so again, this is not what ours would look like. Um, you know, the design would be as close to our design as possible with the cutout edges. Um, you know, this is again, just an example, but I wanted to show you, um, the kind of the, the finish and the material that they could produce. Um, again, not as nice as wood. However, I do think it's, it's going to be a lot more durable. Um, and the longevity is there, for example, um, in order to, you know, get a quote, I, ac I actually walked outside, took a picture of my own sign that is currently hanging on my house. Um, we got that about six years ago, and it's already actually chipping quite a bit. Um, and, you know, probably doesn't have too much longer before I'd be wanting to replace it for kind of a fresher, more clean looking sign. 
um, you know, so so what the the PVC lacks in, you know, maybe some authenticity, you um, you know, gain some you know durability and longevity. Um, so I kind of just wanted to put that out to you guys um, for thoughts or feedback. Um, and I'm gonna stop sharing now. Um, okay, so that, yeah, that's, so that's kind of like the, the option I have to explore right now. Um, again, about 70, $75 to do like a trial, see what we think. We wouldn't be locked into anything, um, if we don't like it. So Annie, um, I'd be fine with, you know, just a trial run. I think that's, that's a fine idea. Um, uh, just a quick question. Um, do we have a sense, and I know that you were compiling that list of, mm -hmm sign owners and you know we didn't have that until fairly fairly recently but do you have a sense of maybe existing sign of, of amongst existing sign owners or people interested whether or not they have a preference for wood to be super authentic or um no i don't strong I don't, preference either way no i mean i i personally don't have um that information um you know, since Kate left, I really haven't had any contact with, you know, homeowners, yeah. either, you know, ones that are already in the sign program or wanting to be in the program. Um, so I don't have visibility to that, um, unfortunately. Okay. No, I just thought I'd ask. Thanks. Oh, so yeah, I would be, um, I'd be fine going ahead with the, um, the trial. That sounds good. I think it's a good use of money. Do we need to make a motion? Or can we just go ahead? Uh, well, Michelle, any, you want to, um, any thoughts here? I'm very I, much in favor. I have to say that, um, quite surprised. They look really nice. Mm -hmm. They look much nicer than, than I anticipated for a vinyl. And I think we should investigate. Yeah. And, I, and I, I was surprised, um, you know, that they, they made those Natick signs look pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and. You know, as as I said, I I would prefer a wood, um, but again, it you know it's worth a shot for something relatively budget friendly. I think yeah, I think the combination of I mean, if you're going to get the same look, better longevity, you know, not this chipping and peeling and stuff, and that we're going to be able to do it at a at a price point, as they'd say, that would allow us to distribute more signs rather than maybe doubling or tripling. You know, I, I'm definitely for it. And I'm I'm trying to remember um, the most recent inquiry that I got um, about a historic house sign was actually someone on East Main Street. And I'm trying to, and I'm sure I can um, remember or find in my email um, the address of the house, uh, who it is. Ah, I just found it. Sorry. It's um, that... It's a lovely mansard um, at, I don't have the exact, I, I have to look it up in my email, but um, the owner, I believe that's 28 East Main, um, mm -hmm. contacted me, um, interested in a house sign, and I had to say, unfortunately, because our sign painter died, um, that program is in suspension. So if we're going to do a test sign, let me get you the information. Would everybody be in favor of that? And we'll do it for this house. If it works out good and we like it, then um, this per and I, I'm just, unfortunately, I'm blanking on um, the person's name. Yeah, it's 28 East Main. Um, that the owner had contacted me saying, I, I'd like to get one of these. And I said, well, sorry, I can't do it right now. So this would be a good test. If it comes out great, she gets her sign. Um, Mm -hmm. Are we any? Are we kind of duplicating the layout of the prior signs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's it. And it's not a much of a risk, Kevin. I'd say this. Yeah. Too. So I, you know, my, what? So they've, they, I've already sent them pictures. I, th I've sent them the specifications. Um, but what I'm, what I would plan to do is physically like take my sign to them, um, so they have like this, you know, physical sign in front of them. Um, you know, just so they can get the cutouts, you know, exactly the right dimension. Um, you know, I think we'll we'll lose a little bit of the hand painted look 
just with like the lettering probably, but in terms of, um, you know, the layout and some of the design elements, the intention is for it to, you know, be as close as, as we possibly can make it. Well, and you know, a lot of people place those signs as some people put them very close to the front door and I, you know, one of my neighbors down the street has it up on the second floor, like it very much exposed there. And it's such a distance that um, you, you couldn't tell, in other words, that it was not hand painted wood kind of thing. So yeah. So do we have a motion um, then to authorize Annie to have a test sign made and um, at a address to be specified. Um, and I'll give her this, I'll dig up this information I had to the, the app, you know, the person who would like one of these. Um, so it's ready-made kind of thing. So, mo so moved. Okay. Second. All right. So, um, that's the motion to authorize Andy to get one of these test signs made and we'll get the address and, and see how it looks. Um, roll call vote, uh, Annie? Yes. Jim? Yes. Grant? Yes. Michelle? Yes. And Miller is yes, 5-0. Thank you. That's great. Um, moving on, Grant, what do you have uh, on CPC? I know there's been a lot going on over there. Yes. Um... So yeah, we had a meeting uh, earlier this month, which was very interesting. Um, we uh, there are a few different things that happened, so I'll try to be brief and, and summarize. Um, so the meeting was called um, because of uh, the townhouse project, which has been ongoing, as, as I'm sure you know. Um, the townhouse project actually, um, for various reasons, uh, came in uh, much under budget in terms of um the uh the amount that it was expected to cost um i believe that was largely because of um uh the contractor who was awarded the bid um was able to do all the masonry or pointing or something like that uh in house so that saved a lot of uh money rather rather than having to put it out to contract um so there's quite a lot of um uh extra funds uh, available for the project uh, based on the original authorization. Um, and so the reason that uh, this meeting was called was um, uh, to discuss whether or not to amend the, uh, uh, the bid documents to um, uh, convert the uh, roof of the building from an asphalt shingle roof to be a slate, um, slate roof, uh, which would be more um, in line with the original historical, you know, historic um, intent of, of the building. Um, so that was not in the original bid. So we we were we were meeting to kind of um, discuss and uh, authorize that um, that change. Uh, and so uh, after much discussion, um, we had a great uh, conversation with uh, John Parent, who is the director of facilities and is um, you know managing the, the project for the town, um, as well as. Um, Someone Spencer, I can't, sorry, I can't remember her. It's, sorry, what was that, Kevin? Lynn Spencer, Spencer Preservation Group. Thank you, yes. Uh, she was there as well to kind of discuss it. And um, so in the end, uh, the CPC did vote to authorize um, additional um, funds to be used for the slate roof. Um, there are a lot of factors that went into that decision, but um, the primary one for me was the historical accuracy um, of uh, of the slate roof as compared to asphalt shingles. Um, also, even though um, slate has a much higher um, upfront cost than asphalt, it uh, also has much greater longevity. Um, so it was actually expected to be more cost effective uh, in the long run um, because you wouldn't have to be replacing the roof every um, 25 to 30 years as you would, uh, you know, if you keep, keep it in good condition, um, you wouldn't have to go back and keep on replacing the roof. So um, yeah, so that was the decision that the CPC made on that front. Um, uh, and so the second item that I wanted to discuss, which was uh, also um, uh, with, uh, well, while we had John Parent um, there from facilities was regarding the South Union School Building um, uh, or the 21 Highland, as you may know it by over um, 
yeah, on Highland Street in, in Southville. Um, and uh, I found it a very informative discussion and actually um, I, I'm hoping um, that he'll be able to join us, uh, Kevin, at our, at our next meeting. We've been talking about that. Um, uh, really just um, kind of going over the status of the building, um, where it stands in terms of condition, um, cost, uh, that kind of thing. And I've just found that a really um, informative, uh, fact-based discussion of the building. Uh, you know, I know that there had been a lot of comments made, um, various forums, select board, other committees about, um, you know, how much it's costing and, you know, how much... Uh, what whether or not it's cost effective to kind of keep the building or what to do with it. So um, essentially he, my, my takeaway from it was that he thinks that the building is in great shape, um, structurally speaking, and just in, in general. Um, he, and, and hopefully he'll be able to talk about this in greater detail, but uh, essentially it seemed to be kind of minor um, exterior aesthetic um, problems in terms of he referred to it as like needing a facelift in terms of kind of um, the most serious problems with the building uh, as it stands currently. So that was, um, you know, from a preservation standpoint, um, very encouraging, I found. Uh, and then we kind of got into detail about uh, the cost to run the building and um, potential ways to, um, you know, pretend, you know uh, convert from oil to you know, electric heating and stuff like that to kind of reduce on, um, to reduce on co costs. Um, interestingly, he, he said that essentially he's, he has been hesitant to embark on any, um, uh, I don't know if it was maintenance or more than maintenance, but kind of uh, embark on any projects on the building until he, until the status of it has kind of been resolved is what he, um, essentially what he said so that, um, because there's kind of this large question mark about what's going to happen with the building, is the town going to dispose of it, that kind of thing, that uh, facilities has been kind of holding off on putting money into it, um, which I think may have may lead or may be leading to some of the deterioration. Um, so um, it, overall, it was a positive um, discussion of it, and it sounds to me like it, you know, if uh, and it's it's not. Um, too far gone to to save or anything like that was my kind of, my main takeaway. So that was that was positive. Um, and then the last part of the discussion was also relating to um, South Union School. And this will be brief. Um, so at the meeting we had uh, the entire CPC, which um, uh, we had a couple of new members joining us. So people from planning board, historical recreation. Um, our CPC consultant is also the chair of Open Space Commission. As well as in the audience, we had chair of planning board and um, chair of Shopsy, uh, Dorian Jasinski. Um, and really after that discussion with um, uh, Mr. Parent, it, it seemed to me that there was really broad scale agreement in the room that the building itself um, is a historic asset and should be saved. I don't want to speak for others, but that was my kind of understanding. Um, so I found that to be very positive, um, both on the CPC, uh, but also, you know, among others um, in the room that um, there was kind of interest in that. Um, and so the CPC um, decided that we'll be writing uh, a letter to the select board um, to, uh, it hasn't taken shape yet, but it might, to kind of encourage the, or highlight why, why the building is important, um, both, you know, there's a playground there, a recreation, open space uh, standpoint, but also obviously the historical um, standpoint as well, um, and really just kind of, uh, I think, advocate for, um, you know, the preservation of, of the building. So um, really positive meeting, and um, thanks for um, giving me the time to share. And thank you, Grant. And what I, I just chime in very quickly um, is that, as you know, um, because I sent out that poll, and then it got, it got pulled out, what happened was that um, I did hear uh, from Dorian Jasinski is the uh, chair of Shopsy um, proposing a joint meeting kind of round table um, with Shopsy historical and open space uh, preservation commission. 
um, the talk over South Union. <clears throat> and I, I immediately said, yes, absolutely, we'll do it. And that's when I sent out that poll to you guys. And then what happened subsequently, um, uh, the chair of Open Space um, said that her group would not be available in July and August. And so we agreed um, by email to try to reschedule in September. So um, just a heads up to look forward to um, hopefully in September, perhaps early October, um, a joint meeting, again, um, Shopsy Historical and Open Space Preservation Commission to talk about um, South Union, which I regarded a very positive um, development. So I, I think it's good. And by the by, last meeting, I indicated that I wanted to write a letter um, for your approval tonight, uh, alerting the select board to the sort of grant opportunities through the um, the state um, with regard to um, design and background, you know, um, research on historic properties like South Union. And given the the kind of flux in that joint meeting, I decided to hold off on that, and maybe we'll do it in August. And and also. Um, you know, as Grant indicated, I, I sort of asked Grant to ask Mr. Perrin if he could come talk to us tonight to give us a, a kind of update about conditions at South Union. Um, and he just wasn't available tonight. And he said he would try to make our August um, or our next meeting. So it's not, it seemed to me appropriate to wait on that letter to the select board um, until we can hear from Mr. Perrin and perhaps um, until we have this joint meeting. Um, to discuss it. So it's stuff to look forward to. So thank you, um, Grant. Um, Michelle, I know that um, you're there, that the pilot committee has met. I don't know if there's anything to report, but I wanted to give you a chance. Um, um, so the pilot committee met on June 28th. Um, it was Patty Burns, Fiore, Kathy Cook, Joseph Palmer from the Capital Planning, and we're still, we still have two open seats that we're looking for citizens. And there's also a need for one person from the Council on Aging. Um, so there was really just a lot of brainstorming. You know, we, we, look, we were talking about how other towns are approaching this from a financial support and looked at exam, you know, at state code. Um, so we do not have our next meeting scheduled as yet, but um, there's a lot of great resources out there. And um, Kathy Cook and Patty burns are, are leading the charge. And also Joseph Palmer, who I, I've never met before. I don't know if you're familiar with him, Kevin. But yeah, he, I know. Yep. So he is actually, um, he's our secretary at the moment. Great. Great. Yep. Yeah. No, he was on, he was on the ARPA committee. Very nice to us. So <laughs> um, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad it's going well. Yes. Great. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so moving on, the next thing I had, and um, I, I, I don't know if there's an appetite for it, but I probably should have done it in June, um, is to sort of revisit the, the you know, in every fiscal year um, to revisit the sort of officers um, issue. Now, um, we lost some people from video, but um, yeah, Annie's there. Um, I, 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 we had to do this, of course, when Kate um, resigned and Annie came forward as vice chair, and that's only been, what, three or four months. Mm -hmm. um, so to ex I, I will just try, because this always gets awkward. I will just try to expedite this really quickly by saying, I am well content with the way everything is. Um, if everybody's satisfied, um, where, you know, everybody's got good committee assignments um, and liaison assignments. Um, Annie having freed up from CPC is now more available as vice chair. I'm pretty, I feel all right with what I'm doing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of work, but I'm happy to continue. So if everybody's satisfied with, you know, say if you're not, and we'll, we can debate it or you want to nominate somebody else or whatever, we can, you know, it's democracy. Um, but if everybody's, I, I, I just to try to cut through the mustard, um, mm -hmm. get out before nine, I will say I'm happy with the way things are. And I would be happy to go uh, because Annie hasn't had a chance again to do much as the sort of 
vice chair treasurer role um, to leave you in both of those slots if you were amenable to it. Um, I think yep. that makes sense. I'm totally, totally happy to continue um, and am very grateful for your willingness, Kevin, to, to continue on as chair. Um, I know that's a lot of work for you, but I think you're fantastic at it. And I think you represent us very well. And I, I definitely uh, support support you in that. Maybe except when it comes to the record button. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, that, if, that, if that's the, the worst thing, then I think that's pretty good. That I am a complete admitted disaster. Um, and my apologies. So um, just one quick question. Well, first, I want to echo everything Annie said. Um, uh, in terms of the officers, so we have a chair, a vice chair, a treasurer. Is that is it those three? Is that correct? Yes. And okay. but I am happy to appoint official recording secretary because it seems to me that Grant <laughs> doing <laughs> unbelievably good work ought to get credit for it. Was everybody supportive of that? Is that okay with you? Can we de officially designate you as so I I'm very grateful for Grant doing that, but I know it's a lot of work um, and I'm happy to take turns if it's too much for Grant, but also if Grant doesn't mind and wants the recognition, happy to support that, but I think it should be up to him um, how he feels about it. Thanks, Annie. Um... Yeah, I don't. I don't think I need the recognition um, personally. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's it is a lot of work and doing my best to keep up with it. But um, yeah, I, I think I'd rather prefer just to kind of do it on an ad hoc basis. Well, we're going to buy you an ice cream cone or a cake sometime. <laughs> Grant, we all appreciate you doing it. I um, uh, recently had a Zoom. Um, with a friend of mine from California. It's just a social thing we do every month or two um, and uh, just catch up on things. But his Zoom account automatically records and transcribes the sessions as a tool called Read. Now, wow. I, don't, I don't know if we'd need town approval to link that to this thing, but it is uncannily accurate to the point of actually summarizing some key points and action items You'd want to edit it, you know, anything AI, yeah. you'd want to obviously filter it, and, and, but it might save you a lot of transcribing time. So we'll well, that's, really, that's really good to know. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. I, I know I hadn't heard that one before. Um, uh, on YouTube, actually, um, and I haven't been using this, but or I've used it for other things, but not for the minutes. Um, uh, for most, if not all videos, you can actually generate a auto auto transcript of, of it. And it's very useful for searching video, searching long videos, but I haven't really used it to kind of summarize, you know, use it for minute taking, but um, that sounds sounds like a great, great tool. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uncanny. Uh, I mean, obviously it drifts off the reservation a little bit here and there. And I think the, the hang up would be, IT would probably have to approve connecting it to this, you know, town Zoom. Well, it's worth talking to Jay about, um, you know, uh, Jay and Hassan, um, see what their thoughts are on it yeah if you want to if you want to send me um if you know the name of it um so well, i'll send an email to to you copy kevin and jay as well and just say here's a here's a tool i've seen used in other settings that seem, would save a lot of time on, on creating minutes and just see what they think awesome thank you yeah yeah so if everybody's happy um and I, i'm not trying to be um presump presumptuous i just want to move it along and get us out of here by nine um uh can we enter to, we could do a joint motion, I think, just to reappoint um, if that's acceptable. So moved. Second. All right. So this would be a motion to reappoint myself as chair and Annie as um, vice chair and treasurer. Correct. So moved by Jim, seconded by who? Annie. Annie. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Um, so roll call vote, Annie? Yes. Jim? Aye. Grant? Aye. Michelle? Yes. Miller is aye, five zero, you're all dolls, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that was easy. Um,
uh, minutes for May 25th, uh, 2023, uh, which we have posted as draft, um, but we've, you know, I think everyone's looked through and um, June 29th, 2023, and that, that um, grant was a little tied up today and I had made um, some edits and, and so um, I sent them out and hopefully people have a chance to review, but any um, notes on, first let's do it May 25th, any changes? No, nope. so um, I, I'll move to approve the minutes of May 25th, 2023. Second it. Uh, okay, roll call vote. Annie? Yes. Jim? Aye. Grant? Aye. Shell? Yes. Miller is aye, five zero, approved May 25th. Um, June 29th, 2023. If you don't mind, who, who seconded that? Just so I got it in the minute. Uh, Jim made the motion, Annie, you seconded, right? Yes. yes. On those minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so on June 29th, any any um, emendations there? Nope. Nope. Look good. All right. So I'll I'll make the motion uh, to approve the minutes of June 29th, 2023. Seconded. Uh, great. Uh, roll call vote. Annie. Yes. Jim. Aye. Grant. Aye. Shell? Yes. And Miller is aye, so five zero on both. Approved, great. Um, now scheduling, um, looking at, you know, and it gets tricky, it's end of summer, we've managed to, I don't know how we pulled off these meetings all summer and everybody's been available, but thank you so much. Um, you all got to get out more, same with me. Um, <laughs> but in August, uh, so today is the 27th, looking at one, two, three, I mean, four weeks would take us to the 24th. Um, we could go to the 31st, that's getting in towards Labor Day weekend. We could do it early the week of the 28th, maybe the 29th, that's a Tuesday or the 30th, Wednesday. I'm, I'm quite flexible um, at this point. Um, how about, but let's say four weeks. It, is that enough? The main concern I think for the 24th is just so that we have enough time with this, um, the hearing uh, for 36 Maine. And, you know, it's going to involve, you know, you guys looking into whatever else you want to look into and then maybe trying to schedule with Mr. Fury. Um, he, he's a very flexible, nice guy. Um, you know, a site visit if you would, you know, all want to take a look at the property. So it depends on your availability um, between now and the 24th. Is, is that is that too soon for you guys to have another meeting? So I, so for the 24th, um, I couldn't meet at seven, but I could meet at 7.30 or eight. Um, but, but if that's a problem, the next week, would be better. Um, I just, I can't do a seven o'clock meeting on the 24th. How something is the 31st too close to Labor Day? That's, you know, Labor Day weekend is the second, third. I believe Labor Day is the fourth. <clears throat> is I'm, that I'm, I'm around. I'll be away on the 31st. Uh, if we wanted to do it, say Tuesday that week or something, that's doable. Uh, or how about how about Wednesday? Is Wednesday the thirtieth okay for you, Jim? Or is that too close to your? It depends. I, I'm not sure when we're leaving. We're going to be out of town for thirty first for sure. Okay. Uh, I think I think Wednesday is probably good. Um, I don't think we're leaving until the morning of the thirty first. Okay. Um, and would how, how's the thirtieth for everybody else? Wednesday the thirtieth. Looks good to me. Good. How about you? Good for me. Good. All right. Well, Jim, if it's okay with you, then we'll we'll shoot for the 30th. Let's say it is. I'll let you know right away if that's going to be a conflict. Okay. So that's going to be Wednesday, the 30th at seven. And that'll be, and that's good because I'll, I'll talk with, um, you know, um, or send Mr. Fury an email kind of forthwith and we'll try to schedule. Um, do, do you guys want to throw out for instance, I absolutely could not do a site visit. I want to do a site. I don't care. I don't want to go. Like, you know. I would like to do a site visit. Okay. Yes. I would like to do a site visit. Um, I am likely going to be gone from the 9th through the 16th 
of August um, out of town. So if we could schedule it before or after then, that would be ideal. But I know that's a long, that's a, you know, lengthy time. So if not possible, I understand. Okay. It, and it might be, um, the nice thing about the summer, of course, is that we could do it, you know, early evening, like after work, doesn't have to be a daytime thing because it won't be pitch black at four o'clock. So hopefully, um, you know, for instance, I, I, I met Mr. Fury at the property yesterday, um, you know, just after work, five, six or something like that. I was there from five to six, I think. Um, so why don't um, Jim or Michelle, if you have anything on this, um, we'll, I'll try to make it an early, you know, an after work kind of affair. Um, but any particular times that are absolutely out for you in the next few weeks? Well, I don't have my schedule yet, but yeah. um, um, if you just schedule it, I'll just see if I'm available, Kevin, mm -hmm. because I really would like to have a site visit. Right. And of course, I, you know, I, I, I think he'll be amenable. He's not, um, you know, of course, no applicant is obliged to provide this, um, but it is helpful. Um, so, yes. um, all right. And Jim, you're ag agnostic or? Agnostic, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank For you. Me, I think um it's from the weekend of the 18th 19th and 20th i'll probably be away i believe so um just those three days won't work for me but yeah i would i'm I'd pretty look, i'm pretty free yeah i'll look not to do it on a weekend for sure but try to get it you know a weekday maybe like six o'clock or something like that you know it, it won't take long um I'll say my my evenings tend to book up with work commitments. Um, so the more notice I can have to like block off my calendar so I don't schedule something, the better. Um, just I I my I do business, you know, nights and weekends a lot. So um the more notice, the better for an evening for me. Okay, will do. Um any I other some flexibility depending on the day, I might I might be able to do a more um daytime is it um because I, I work hybrid so sometimes i'm in self row and sometimes i'm not so ah, um, okay that could work for me um earlier in the day probably goes for annie as well what um jim and michelle would actually a day thing be better if you're interested again i'm agnostic on on the visit so don't schedule around me okay um and michelle do it, it yeah, i know well, it depends I, on your schedule as well home sometimes and sometimes I'm out of town so all right well we'll see we'll have to put something out there and see you know how it how it goes um the the other business I I, I will just mention because um it, it I could have slipped this in um in the conversation when I was talking about um my kind of impromptu meeting with um Mr. Cundiff at DPW and that is um we did talk about um, just to update you about the historic district signage. And, you know, I made a kind of little nudge that we were interested in getting those up as quickly as possible. And Annie, what he said actually was that he really, really wants to have an answer from the vendor as to recommended installation. Yes. Thank you for the reminder. I, I copied you when I reached out to him and I never heard back. Right. Um, well, so it, let me let money. me ping him again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me let me ping Bernie. Yeah. Um, and see if we can get his uh, his his insight on that. Yeah, because he was concerned. I mean, he was talking things like you know wind load and and depth of. And I said, I think this is a standard kind of install. You know, so he you know he was he's you know as you'd expect, sort of cautious. About yeah putting his people in a position of something that's not going to work, it be difficult, or, you know, right. and he talked about it might need to be subcontracted. I said, let me get the information and I'll get back to you. Um, and I, I did, you know, um, we do, of course, um, basically we underspent our allocation. So if we do need additional Either if it's material or um, you know the the, the actual has to be subbed out, right? We've got a couple thousand left in the allocation, which you know if we were going to turn it back to the pot, basically.
but I want to get an answer that quick because again, the, the select board has to commit all that money, even the 2000 that's left in our little um, end of it, they have to commit it, I believe by uh, next June. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, that's that. Um, but yeah, just reach out to that guy again and see if he'll. Yeah, I'm emailing him right now as we as we speak. Cool. Uh, and now we are at public comment. And thank you for that. And boy, you know, one is my wife, who's I, I, she's going to hear me moaning and complaining about my idiocy in not turning on the recording. And the other is Mr. Stivers. I'm always glad to um, have on board. If you either of you have anything to say, <laughs> um, now's the time. Nope. All right. Thank you. Um, brings us to adjournment. Um, somebody want to make a motion that we adjourn? So moved. Second. Great. Uh, roll call vote would be Annie. Yes. Jim. Aye. Grant. Aye. Michelle. Yes. Miller is I. I'm now going to go cry into a glass of wine, maybe, and turn the video <laughs> off. Turn off the video. Well, the video goes off automatically when I end the meeting. So, uh, be sure to turn off the recording. <laughs> well, now I have another eleven months uh, as chair, unless I'm struck down, you know, to try to get it right. So I will. I promise you all. Thank you so much. And it, it, well. I wanted to be done by nine. It's nine oh two. There you go. I'm still a work in progress. Close <laughs> enough. Close Thank enough. You. Close enough. Yeah. Good night. Love to you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.